Hey everyone, Devin here with Auto Journey, and we're sitting inside my 2005 Ford Mustang for another Android head unit related video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you three tips on how to improve your Android head unit user experience. Number one, I'm going to be showing you how to add Android Auto to any Android head unit. Number two, I'm going to show you how to swap out that default launcher so you can customize your Android head unit to the way that you want it to look and function. And number three, we're going to automatically turn on your phone's hotspot when you enter your vehicle so your Android head unit already has the data it needs for your music apps and things like that. Plus, it's going to make connecting to Android Auto wirelessly a whole lot easier. So stay tuned and here we go. So what you're looking at here, minus my dash being all torn apart because I'm working on other things in the vehicle, is a cheap Android head unit that I bought off of Amazon for about $100. This is going to be similar to any other Android head unit that you can probably buy today, even though I don't believe you can buy this exact one. I do want to make one note here. If you do have a 2005 to 2009 Ford Mustang like mine, I would probably try to opt for one that has hardware buttons instead of the soft touch buttons. I just think it looks better, but at the time that I actually purchased this, it was going to go in a different vehicle, so I didn't really care. But now you can get ones with knobs and stuff like that, so that's definitely one that I'd go for, and I'm going to go ahead and link one like that down below. Let's go ahead and get started, and I'm going to show you how to add Android Auto to this cheap Android head unit. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up the Google Play Store and you're going to look for head unit reloaded. There's going to be two versions of it. I'm going to click the full version, which is $4.99, but there is also a trial version. If you don't want to commit to the full price, you can go ahead and try that. But for the rest of this video, we're going to be using the full version here. Once you have head unit reloaded installed, you're going to want to open up the app to begin the setup process. It's going to ask for permission for a few things such as GPS, microphone, and phone access. And then it's going to run a quick test and you're going to want to verify that you were able to see the video. And then finally, it's going to ask for permission to modify system settings. You're going to want to click that on and back out. And then there's just one thing left to do. So next, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my Type-C cable and I'm going to plug it into my smartphone. And you're going to see that head unit reloaded has a prompt. You're going to want to make sure you click the checkbox and click OK. And now I'm in Android Auto. So I'm going to go ahead and just load up a game real quick so you can see Android Auto functioning and you can see how responsive it is. If you connect your Android head unit to your phone's hotspot, you should be able to connect wirelessly to Android Auto via the Wi-Fi button. And that's what I'm demonstrating here. You can see that I am not connected to my USB cable, but I'm still able to interact with Android Auto. If you have issues connecting to Android Auto wirelessly through the Wi-Fi button and it just keeps resetting itself and head unit reloaded, you're going to want to go ahead and open up your Android phone and you're going to go into the Android Auto settings and you're going to look for the option to enable wireless Android Auto. And here that's buried under my developer settings, but sometimes it is available at the bottom of the Android Auto settings, so check both places. If you're still having issues after checking the box for wireless Android Auto, you're going to want to click the button that says start head unit server and that should fix your problem. So I'm going to walk you through the default launcher real quick of this cheap Android head unit. You can see it's pretty simple and at first glance it looks pretty nice, but there's not any customization options like on the home screen here. You can change the default map in the car settings here, but you can't change the default music launcher or anything like that. So that's why I'm going with Nova Launcher. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Google Play Store on the Android head unit and I'm going to type in Nova Launcher. It's going to autofill Nova Launcher Pro, but for this we're actually just going to use the free version. Once you have Nova Launcher open, it's going to take you through the setup process. So here you can see that there's different shapes that you can change the icons to as well as their size. Below that you can actually set a default search engine, which is pretty cool. Below that there's additional actions that you can set, so I'm going to go ahead and enable the Assistant as well as the Play Store. And this is the basic Nova Launcher. As you can see, it's super simple, but you're going to want to go ahead and open up the Nova settings. And here I'm going to change the app drawer layout. I'm actually going to reduce the number of grids so I can get larger icons on the home screen. And the cool thing about Nova Launcher is you can actually add widgets. So this goes back to that functionality and customization that I was looking for. So I just added the YouTube music widget here as an example. Another cool thing about Nova Launcher that even though it seems pretty basic was not possible with the default stock launcher is changing the name of apps and icons. So here you can see that I took head unit reloaded and I simply changed it to Android Auto. Saving the best for last, we are now going to install Tasker, and this app is going to be what allows us to turn on our phone's hotspot when we enter our vehicle. It's going to trigger the Wi-Fi hotspot to turn on once the Bluetooth from our phone connects to the Bluetooth from the Android head unit. 
Now Tasker is 349, but if you have a Google Play Pass subscription, you can actually get it for free. After Tasker is installed, you're gonna go ahead and click the first option, then it's gonna walk you through turning on certain settings and notifications. So I'm just gonna speed this up real quick. And after that, it's gonna give you a basic functionality walkthrough. If you can believe it, this is actually the easiest part. You're gonna go ahead and type in hotspot in the top search bar there. It's gonna bring up the module. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and download it in the top right there. After the routine is enabled, you're gonna go ahead and click yes. It's gonna ask for permission for a couple things. Go ahead and click allow. You need to enable the system settings here. And just like that, the automatic car hotspot has been imported and enabled. It asks for your Bluetooth for your car. So that way, when your phone connects to that specific Bluetooth, it'll kick on your hotspot. That wraps it up for this video. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, please go ahead and give this video a like. If you want to see more mods coming to my S197 Mustang, you're definitely going to want to subscribe. And finally, if you plan to do anything that I discussed in this video to your Android head unit, comment down below and let me know. Catch you on the next one.